Dale, IRAP Dean of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up and this is for Monday and this is the 12th of August 2019 and we're around the 440 p.m. zone and as you look at these markets what a crazy move. Big down day in stock market. Obviously, you get two stories with this. I, all day long, I'm listening to financial and TV, many of the stations. I don't just stay on one of them. I, I really rotate because a lot of these people have something to say that's good. And the one thing that I was reminded of is from the highs in the Dow and other markets, you're down 5%. The world has not caved in. What we have to get used to is bigger price moves because you're so high up in the markets. That's the first. Obviously, the second is what's going on in interest rates. And they are trying to tell you something is seriously wrong. There is a race on. You've taken the 10-year note down to uh, now, what, 164? And now the big firms are saying we're going to one and a quarter. I'm talking the big banks. I'm reading, I won't mention them, but the, I get the reports like maybe you do. I'm on the mailing list and I'm reading them going, whoa. So the Fed is behind the eight ball. Behind the curve is probably the right grammar. And that is the problem. The market is doing the Fed's work for it. The Fed, instead of leading the market, now the market's ahead of the Fed in breaking of interest rates. In the grain market, a massive break. One of the largest breaks in corn that we've had, I think, in six years. It's the first time in a couple that I remember a limit down move, 6% move today in that market. And that's because the trade was completely caught off guard uh, in terms of the USDA report that was well publicized coming out, but the acreage numbers that corn had, President Trump would call it fake news that those floods didn't really occur because you actually have so many acres planted. How did the farmers get to them if we were looking at all that news? They just cleared the board, so let's go to the charts and let the financial markets talk to us. In the S&P, we're back under the 18-week moving average of closes. So for the meantime, we have a market that's got downside bias. Remember, we had a big move today. So when you get big moves, you had, you had a 1.35% move. The one thing I always look at is what day of the week did it happen because uh, Tuesdays, after a big move on a Monday, there's a word called Tuesday reversals. It doesn't always happen. But when you get big moves, you expect that you're going to get a, a turn away from that to a certain degree. Doesn't have to happen. I'm just telling you the wording. In terms of trend, the trend is down. Lower highs now, lower lows. That's the definition of a downtrend. It gets negated if the market gets over 29.4075 in the SEP. The market has been fighting at the 100 day moving average and if you get my commentaries that was off to 200 where I thought the market's first resistance would be and from there if it exceed if it extended the gain then I was looking for the 18 day average now the question is because so many analysts are talking about this and you haven't had a panic in the market and they're looking for something that shows more of a panic it's too classic. I don't think it's going to happen that way, but they'd like to see the market come down. And of course, I think that the pros again would go to the well on the 200 day moving average and nibble at it. They'd certainly, if you're short, that's a cover short zone, not giving you a trade recommendation, but when you hit the 200 day, it's a big number. Watch financial TV. You'll hear talking, uh, people talking about it, not me. When you look at the Bollinger Bands, you broke out of them right here and you have just cratered to the downside. We finally had a bounce away from staying under these bands. I think it was last Tuesday you had hit, was that? Yeah, it was last Tuesday. You had hit the 200 day. You got back over the band, the first resistance, the 100 day. Didn't make it to the 18 and you can see that's your battleground. I'll repeat again, take out this high and maybe the 18 day average comes into play, but momentum is down. So I've got the trend down. I have the bias down since I'm under the 18 day average. That determines bias and momentum is trying, trying to turn itself down. When it reopens tonight, it'll be very interesting to see if the red line uh, continues and gets itself under the blue. That would confirm momentum turning down. In the NASDAQ, it's the same battle. You hit the 200 day, you got back to the 100, you've stalled at that number. You're looking at momentum here that might turn down tonight. I don't know. The bias is down, the trend is down until you take out 77, 38, 50, take that out. 
then the 18-day average comes into quick play. In the Dow, same thing. You hit the 200-day, you got back over the Bollinger Band, went to the 100, slipping. But look where the 200 and the Bollinger Band come in. They're right by each other now. So be interesting tonight if you get follow-through in that market or not. Then we get to the Russell. And in the Russell, it's a different situation. In the other markets, the 200-day was offering support. The 200-day in this market, this gray line right here, is offering resistance. And you saw that happen two days last week, and now we're getting this break again, so the Bollinger Band could be the supports number. Like the others, there's a unison here. Take out last week's high, and you put in the play the potential for the 18-day average of closes. In the VIX cash, if you were with me this morning, I was saying, be careful, folks. Could get a bounce in it today if I uh, had my morning subscriber video. And I do think the pros that went short here, I think they're caught in this position poorly. That does not mean they won't get back to the 18-day average, but it's a losing position. Each day, that number's going higher. That's where I think they're looking to cover. I don't like that trade. In the bond market, you're went up over the upper Bollinger Band, moved to the right-hand side. Why is that important? Because 95% of the time, the market will trade within the bands. So the, when they lock in on the band, and if you get an embedded reading, watch out. You've got a powerhouse market at your hands. Now, do we have an embedded reading? Embedded means both numbers are over 80, at least three days in a row to start. Now, you have it there. You didn't have it on Friday. Did you have it on Thursday? Yep. Did you have the same reading on Wednesday? Yep. Did you have it on Tuesday? Now, what do I teach? The first day you lose an embedded reading, the only time it could return is the very next day. So you lost it on Friday. Today, you got it right back. That caught the bears, and you're back to the Bollinger Band. Now, the key is not to get back under this 159.23. Uh, if that were taken out, maybe you get back to the 18-day average. But as I said, there's a panic here. And the panic is that practically everyone that is short this market has got a loss. These are, whenever you get to contract highs, and that's what you're basically uh, at 10 points away, you have nobody on the short side under you with a profit. You got a few people here from that one day, but that's about it. In the 10-year note, the market moved just like they did in the bonds. You had five days in a row up and over the Bollinger Band, and then just like clockwork, the market moved back within it. Five is an important number. It's not magic, but it often you don't get beyond five. Go and count below or above in succession. You'll see what I'm getting at. On a hand, you're going to be able to count on an active contract at times, not just one, but I'm talking the 40 commodities. It doesn't happen often. Can it? Sure. You get into a, some crazy situation. But let's talk. You're not looking to be short up here. The question is, have you overstayed your hand maybe on the long side for a little bit? When we come to TLT, a new high on this move, the market got the higher lows, higher highs, and embedded reading. Still very bullish. Until that reading is lost, the embedded reading, I think these markets stay with bids. Dollar index turned bearish today. Now you have lower highs, lower lows. Your bias is down. You're under the 18-day average. The only thing against this trade is that you're oversold. That's the only thing. If you extend the break here, and I do think the trend is down until today's high is taken out, and the reason is that would break that pattern, then you're putting into play the potential for the 100-day average in the lower Bollinger Band. Take out today's high of 97.55. Uh, that's about 35 points away from where you're at right now, and I'd want to rethink the market. It's that simple. In the euro, it's the flip-flop. Now you've got an outside day up, but it's not a trend up. You have a lower low and a higher high. That's not the same. It's the flip-flop of the dollar and momentum. You're overbought in this market. But the market, how many days have we fought at that, what I call that line in the sand, that 18-day average? If the market can extend this rally with the dollar getting a piece of bad news somewhere, then these two numbers become the potential, 113.12 to 113.27. Got it? But I'm still concerned with that overbought. In the pound, I remain in the bear camp. Uh, lower highs, lower lows. You didn't even budge the 
embedded reading, so it stayed as it was today. Didn't get that much of a rally. And the question is, can you get down to the lower Bollinger Band again? Or lose the embedded reading and then you get a wave of short covering. In the end, I did a piece today for TikTok on currency pairs, this versus the Australian dollar. Um, and simply put, think of the two, what's going on. This is safe haven currency. I've said it over and over. The reality is I don't get why, but that's how traders uh, trade it. And they try to remove from Europe, they try to remove themselves from the US and they're moving into another major currency of the world and Aussies tied to China. So they're buying the yen, they're selling that. So the currency pair is getting its butt kicked in a good way if you're, if you're long the yen, short the uh, Aussie. In Bitcoin, I see an overbought market that has got resistance at the upper Bollinger Band, support back at the 18-day average. But to get to that support, you, if you break down through this low right through here, this uh, 11,325, I think it is, if you get lower highs, lower lows, you're not in an uptrend. But I would expect then the market to try to fight a battle at the 18-day average of closes. Here is that spread of crude, basically WTI versus uh, Brent. And you tell me, look at this, you're down to 377 difference. You were just at $7. So this has made about three and a half dollars in the market. You can see the energies are still in a bear market, very oversold. They had been pushing the lower Bollinger Band. Now they've gone somewhat sideways. They closed four cents higher today. A lot of talk as to what OPEC's gonna do to cut production, however, the U.S. Uh, on WTI crude, they're talking next month of adding another 85 million barrels a day. I was just reading the EIA report and going, whoa, that's pretty big numbers. You've got lower highs, lower lows. I'll call this a short covering rally so far. Resistance back up here at 55.40. Uh, the last rally high was 5,600. If you took that out, you'd end up with a lower low, higher high pattern. And I'd still expect that battle to be right there. Let's assume you had a piece of bullish news hit. You've got a combination of resistance at 59.05 to 58.93. You first got to change this to anything but a bounce and so far that's all it is. Gasoline's still in the downtrend and here's the problem for gasoline. Your driving season is now coming to an end. You're already at August 12th. Kids go back to school in September. Families don't travel as much, just a seasonal event. So pressure here, you can get short covering at any time but the, da the danger is longer term, what's bullish about this? Then we get to natural gas. Now, you have a different event happening here. And the event that is happening in this market is that as the weather starts changing, and it will change, we're at August 12th, you get into September, it can be hot, but not for long. Sun, less sun time during the day. It's already in Chicago at eight o'clock, 8.30, it's dark. So gotta start paying attention to all that. And what are the demands for natural gas? Well, you're not gonna be using it for air conditioning as much in different parts. Don't tell that to the people in Texas and Arizona because it's still 100 degrees plus. But for us in the Midwest, on the East Coast, it starts getting a bit milder and you have to pay attention to all that. We talk about this and a lot more in our Linen Associate research. If you haven't tried it, maybe you should. It's written for futures traders. I don't care if you're a commercial, I don't care if you're a speculator, an option, a futures trader. I think it, you deserve the opportunity to see what we write for our people. We offer a two week trial, that's it. If you subscribe to my research uh, as a paying person, you're entitled to get some of this on the full research, but not just the morning video. So different choices that we make for people. How do you get it? Go to our website, You'll see a carousel of free offers. Click on it. It'll take you from there right where you need to be. In the meantime, I'm I Rapstein. And remember, by the way, if you're watching YouTube, you can always click here. I'll see you all tomorrow. I want to get that corn off my face because I, I certainly thought it was going to be a more bullish report today than they got. Take care.